Pleasant morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Yes, it's a blessing for us to be here, amen. I want to welcome those of us who are here. God has been good to us, amen. amen. He has kept us safe and thank God. He is great. I want to thank Mary Jane for that beautiful story. I remember when she was telling the story, I remember how I had an uncle back in the island and he had got married to two sisters. And uh, both of them couldn't get along. They were always fighting. I also remember that a pastor told a story when he was given a district. He had a new church and there were two members in the church. And both of them couldn't get along. So even in the church there is fighting. But thank God for Jesus. Amen. It's a privilege for us to be here and to be able to speak to us this morning. I always count it a high calling, and uh, I never take it for granted. Because I say to myself, this might very well be the last message. Mm -hmm. So I thank God for this wonderful opportunity. Mm -hmm. I want to say to us that if Adam had put aside and, and stayed with me a thousand dollars every day in his savings account, Adam had put aside a thousand dollars every day from the day that he was created until our time. Do you have any idea of how much money he would have saved up? A thousand dollars every day for what, over six thousand years. However, he would not have been as wealthy as John D. Rockefeller or Henry Ford. Now, if Henry Ford or Rockefeller were alive in the days of Solomon, Solomon would hire Henry Ford to be his chauffeur and Rockefeller to mow his lawn. <laughs> and they would make more money being his chauffeur and mowing his lawn. That gives you an idea of how wealthy Solomon was. He was filthy rich. Now, I don't know what this has to do with the message this morning. <laughs> uh, but let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for being in this place of worship. As we open your words, open our minds and give us understanding. May we learn something that will draw us closer to you. Speak to me, through me, and for me. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Egypt. 
And 40 years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on this day, on that day, saying, Surely the land wherein thy, thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance, and thy children forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years. So he was forty years when he went to spy out the land, and the Lord had kept him now alive forty-five years after. So he was eighty-five years old. <clears throat> since, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day four score and five years old. A score is twenty. So he's 85 years old at this time. <clears throat> Verse 11 says, As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now. For war, both to go out and to come in. Now therefore, give me this mountain. An amazing story. It's not just a play with words, but it is actually what had happened. Now the word Caleb in the Hebrew means dog. A dog that will not go away. That's why I tell the message. I'm a tough dog. Talking about Caleb. Now it took the Israelites, after they left Egypt, one year to get to the Promised Land. They spent three months to get to Sinai, and they spent six months building the tabernacle, and then another three months to get to the land of Canaan. But it took them 40 years to get in. Amazing. One year to get to uh, the land of Canaan, and 40 years after to get in. Now let's look at the life of Caleb for a little bit. Let's turn to the book of Numbers chapter 13 and 14. The book of Numbers. Numbers 13 and 14. Let's look at the life of Caleb. Now Joshua his name is mentioned 237 times in the scriptures. Caleb's name is only mentioned 28 times. And uh, we'll see what he did. In Numbers chapter 13 and verse 30, after the, 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 the ten other spies, who went to spy out the land, came back, they brought, the scripture says they brought an evil report. And verse 13 says, And Caleb still the people, not Joshua, Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the ten other spies said, There are giants in the land. Verse 33, and there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come to, of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, uh, and so we were in their sight. So the ten other spies saw themselves in their own eyes. They belittled themselves as grasshoppers. And they look at the, the, the children of Anak, the Amalekites, as giants. Truly they were giants in the sense that they were, they were big. We are not to look at ourselves in our own eyes. 
Amen. But we have to look at ourselves in the eyes of God. Amen. Amen. And then we can see a difference. Now Caleb was born as a slave in Egypt. He was born in slavery. And it seems that though for over 300 years, God had done nothing. Because they were there for 400 years in slavery in Egypt. And this runaway prince who had left Egypt because he, had, uh, he was adopted, he was uh, a child of a Jewish mother. And uh, you know the story of um, his mother and his father and how Miriam followed that little ark that, little, that was pitched and she put it afloat because the command was to kill all the Jewish males because they were multiplying so much. And the Egyptians said maybe they will overcome us because there was a new pharaoh who had not known Joseph. And the then pharaoh, as we are studying in our Sabbath school quarterly, showed favor to, to Joseph and his family. And they got a good place of land in Goshen. Amen? Mm -hmm. And God blessed them tremendously. And now they were slaves in a foreign land. And they were there for 400 years. And, and, and this, this individual who was put in this, uh, in this ark was seen by the daughter of Pharaoh, whose name was Hapshepsah. And the then known Pharaoh was Tutmos, and his wife was Amnos. And Moses was given the name Ram Moses means Moses means begotten of the water. And she decided to raise him as her own. So his stepmother was Pharaoh's daughter. And, uh, but he was nursed for 12 years by his biological mother. Amen. Amen. And she took that time to instill in him that you are special, that you are unique, that you are valuable, that you are a child of um, the king. Amen. You are royal descent, and uh, you are special. And he had a miraculous uh, rescue, and he also had uh, the privilege of growing up in a palace. And he was in line to be the next pharaoh of Egypt, to be the next prince of Egypt. Now, now the, the, the pharaoh of Egypt is not only uh, the commander in chief, but he is also the priest of the pagan culture. But when Moses was called to be the priest, and it was that, at that point in time, he said, I cannot compromise my faith. Amen. He chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to cover the, the wealth of Egypt for a season. And you know the story how he fled because two Egyptians, uh, one Egyptian uh, was fighting against, and then a quarrel against uh, one of the Israelites. And he slew the Egyptian and he buried him in the sand. And next day he saw two Israelites having a confrontation and they said to him, are you going to kill one of us the same way you killed the Egyptian yesterday? And he knew that the thing was known. So he decided to run away for, for his life. But the time came when God said, I want you to go back and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Now, a friend of mine, how old was Moses at this time? He was 80. How old was Joshua when God called him? Um, 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 Caleb. When, when Caleb said, um, give me that mountain, he was what? 40. No, he was 85. 40. 85 years. He was 40 when he went to spy out um, the, the land of Canaan. Amen. Now, sometimes God wants to give us all a blessing at the same time. But we cannot handle it. Amen? And uh, we cannot handle all the blessing at the same time. So sometimes we have to go into the wilderness. Amen. And even though they were in the wilderness, God was blessing them all the while. As I said, uh, Caleb was born as a slave. He grew up as a slave in Egypt land. He had no indoor uh, running water or plumbing. And uh, he had to sleep on a crate. He sometimes he received poor wages or no wages, and he would be beaten 
by a, an, uh, an Egyptian landlord. He grew up a hard life, a tough life. He was a tough dog, amen? <laughs> the only time he knew about the God of heaven is when Moses came to Egypt and Caleb witnessed the ten plagues. And by the way, every plague was against one of the Egyptian gods, amen? And he saw that the, the, the Egyptian gods could not stand before the God of Moses. So he learned to, he learned to accept or embrace the knowledge of Moses' God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he learned to trust uh, in, in Moses' God. Remember, he grew up in slavery. And they, they, they had basically forgotten or lost knowledge of the true and living God. And so I'm, I'm speaking to the right congregation today, amen? amen? And those of us who think that this is a time for retirement, when we embrace, uh, when we change camps, and we have a new commander and chief, this is a school that we never retire from, amen? amen? Sometimes our biggest challenge comes to us when we retire. So there's no, there's no giving up. As long as there's breath in our nostrils, we gotta keep on fighting the good fight of faith. What do you say, amen? amen. So Caleb learned about the God of heaven. And uh, he was faithful to what he learned. He was there at Sinai when God said, don't touch the mountain unless he die. He was there even though they found themselves in, in wandering in the, in the desert for 40 years. Even though we find ourselves in the desert, that doesn't mean that God has left us. Amen? Amen. God was with them every single day. They had a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Amen. Moses uh, was their leader and Caleb joined the water that flowed from the rock. That rock was Christ, amen? amen? That followed them through the wilderness and stood right next to the sanctuary. Caleb was there all through the wilderness journey. He was there when they marched around Jericho. Amen. And he learned to trust the true and the living God. He was there when they crossed the Red Sea. He was Caleb at the manner that God gave him every single day. Amen? He was there when the sun stood still. He was there in the Aiken fiasco. So, so Caleb witnessed all the events that transpired. And there's, there's no, no one word of complaint or displeasure on the part of Caleb when he said, he never said to himself, why should I go to the wilderness when it's not my fault? Why should I wander for 40 years in the desert? He didn't complain about the other 10 spies. Amen. We are not to complain about each other, amen? All of us are in this thing together. Romans 3, 33 says, all have sinned. Amen. That includes you and I, amen? amen? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is that, Romans 6, 23. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You see the word but is a conjunctive injunction. The word but changes that which have gone before from that which is to come. The wages of sin is that but the gift of God. Salvation, my friend, is a gift that God gives us. All of us are in this thing together. So it's not saying that she has committed adultery. All of us have sinned. And we are not to say that he is on drugs. All of us are high. And all of us are in Egypt land. We are not yet into the promised land. Amen? Amen. But in the sweet by and by, if we are faithful, we are going to get there. What do you say? Amen. Thank God. Always remember that we are children of the king. We have royal blood running through our veins. So Caleb didn't allow Egypt to pollute him. Amen. He did not retract. He did not uh, retract his decision. He was faithful to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And friend of mine, we ought to be faithful. Yes. 
Being a Christian is not how strong you are, but how wise you are in recognizing your weakness. Amen? Because we are not a boast in our strength. All of us are weak. All of us have come short of the glory of God. But there is one who is mightier than, than, than you and I. Amen? Amen. He is all powerful. So Caleb always told himself that he belonged to the God of heaven. There are trials and there are temptations that is coming our way that we have no idea. And it's going to test our faith to the utmost as though there is not another upon the face of this earth. This COVID thing is just a kindergarten something. Some of us are going to live through the time of trouble. And I believe I'm going to be one of them. I don't know. But I have time of trouble genes in me. Amen? Amen. But if we are faithful, God is going to give us a crown of life. What do you say? Yes. We are not to lean on our own understanding, but we are to trust in Him in everything. Because sometimes our greatest struggle comes to us in our weakest moments. Amen? It is not to say, why me? We are to say, why not me? Amen? Because God needs some other God. He needs some stars. He needs individuals to stand up and become the amen? amen. We are not to bend or bow or sway. We are to be true as a needle to the pole. So this is not a retirement church. Amen. amen. We are to be on fire for the Lord, what do you say? Amen. It's not a time to relax. Amen. It's a time to be faithful. You see, friend of mine, in a time of crisis, it does not develop character, but in a time of crisis, reveals character. Amen. Whether we are made of costume, jewelry, or the real thing. Amen? Amen. In a time of crisis, our character is revealed. Not a time to develop character. Amen. And that's why Joshua was, um, Caleb was able to say, give me that mountain. We never read the scripture that, that Caleb um, was, a, was, a, was, was a, one of the leaders, or he never made the eldership. When, when Joshua was looking for an assistant, he never called him Caleb. But Caleb is the one who quelled the people uh, when, when the other spies were giving a bad report. There is another mountain that needed to be climbed and conquered. While Jesus was in the wilderness, in the Garden of Gethsemane, praying, he was disturbed by the pounding feet of leather by the Roman soldiers. Then Jesus asked a plain and pointed question, whom seek ye? And he said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said, I am he. And the record says that they fell back like dead men. You would have think that they would have learned a lesson after the first encounter. And then, then they got up and Jesus asked them again, whom seek ye? And he said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Christ said, I told you I am he. Let these go. So much like Jesus, amen. He always takes the brunt of the matter. Take me, let me go. Take me, let sinners go. Amen? Mm. Jesus always takes the brunt of the matter. He takes the pressure on himself. But let this go. <coughs> and when he prayed in Gethsemane, that mountain he didn't want to climb. The mountain called, called Calvary. God got us here. But he took a word for, from Joshua when he said, give me that mountain. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. Amen? Amen. Now, that was not an easy task. That was not an easy task that Jesus encountered. As a matter of fact, he divested himself of his divinity. He was clothed in the garb of humanity. Amen. And uh, he said to his father, give me that mountain, a mount called Calvary. Now some say that the cross was invented by the Phoenicians, some say by the Carthaginians, 
and the Egyptians embraced a cross, but when Rome came along, they modified the cross, and they used it for capital punishment. The, the cross was a Roman death machine. It was not an easy instrument. It is said that a healthy person can live for four days on a cross. And uh, it is estimated that it weighed over 250 pounds of hard wood. It consisted of two beams, one horizontal and one vertical. The vertical beam had a slanted block at the base of it, and the, the, the horizontal beam, the victim feet were, were, were wrapped in an unnatural position, so he could not raise himself up easily to breathe, and most of the victims would die from suffocation. If your head fell forward instead of backward, your tongue would swell, and you could, you could choke yourself to death. And the, the arms were all stretched, and they were pulled, and they were fastened on that cross so that he could not raise himself easily to breathe. He couldn't get air in the diaphragm. Now, now, there's no reason why Jesus should be on the cross because only runaway slaves and hardened criminals were on the cross. So if he would stand before the judge back then in those days, and the judge would pass a sentence that your body should be shot through the arrows until you die, or you, you should be fed the wild animals, that was an easy sentence. You, you could come back to your cell and still look forward for a part in the resurrection, amen? amen? But if the judge would pass a sentence and say, you will be hung on a tree or crucified on a cross, which was part of a tree, then not even your relatives were told to feel sorry for you. You were under the curse of God. And that was part of the law in Israel. And that was the Jews, that is exactly what the Jews believed. Jesus was accused of blasphemy, which is claiming to be God. When Jesus had before Abraham was I am, that is the highest you can go in claiming deity, the great I am. So in the Jewish mind, he could not go higher than that. So when Jesus had before Abraham was I am, he was claiming de deity. Yes. He was claiming to be divine. And the Jews took up stones to stone him. So if they wanted to get rid of Jesus, it should have been stoning. But they wanted to put Jesus on a cross, and because they could not put anybody to death because they were under the Romans, only, only the Romans could put anybody to death on the cross. There were a great length of undertaking scheme going on in wanting Jesus on the cross. So when they came to Pilate and said, if you don't pass the death sentence, you are not Caesar's friend. So they threatened Pilate with his job. And many people today are giving up on Christ because of a job. God gave you the job in the first place, amen? And if you lose your job, you can get another one, amen? Yes, right. We need to trust in Jesus for what you say. Amen. God loves every single one of us, amen. as though there is not another upon the face of this earth. He loves you with an everlasting love, friend of mine. Don't sell out on Jesus. This is not a time to give up, amen? Or to get tired or worry. This is a time to hold on. Amen. The battle is not ours, but we are involved in the battle. The battle is the Lord's. And the good news is, Christ has already gotten the victory, what do you say, amen? amen? So greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yes. It's a trying time in which we live. And none of us knows what's going to happen tomorrow. But if you are faithful, as the Lord said to as the angel said to Ellen White, if you are faithful, you will come back to this heavenly country, amen? amen. If you are faithful. Now, the ravens and the vultures would fly high then low and they would take a meal while the victim was on a cross. Sometimes they would come and pluck out your eyes while you are still alive. 